Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am playing with some fun things from Heffy Doodle and creating this super cool background with Distress Oxide sprays and it even has an interactive sliding element. Let's take a look at the stamp set I'm using today. This is the Popping By stamp set. That's Homeschool Heroes, which I don't actually end up using. I have the straight slider die, the Happy Birthday Happy Cut die, and this mini male slimline die. This is the balloon room stencil that I'll be using to create my background. First, I wanna die cut out that background, so I am die cutting this largest die from that mini male die set. The edge of it looks like a postage stamp. It's so cool. Then I'm using these little envelopes that I really thought I was gonna use on my card but I don't actually end up using them but they're the cutest things ever. The Distress Oxide sprays that I'm using are Seedless Preserves, Salty Ocean, and Worn Lipstick. Now this is a six by six stencil but I'm going to have it carry on down at the bottom of my page. So I'm going to spray this and then I didn't want to waste any of that ink that got on the top of the stencil so I'm going to just bring in a scrap piece of paper and press that down and pick it up and I'm going to challenge myself to use that paper on this card in some way. So you'll see me do that. So I'm just gonna scoot this down and then spray the bottom half of the card. You can see I'm lining that balloon on the left up with another balloon so it's not a partial balloon. And then I'm just using some post-it note and my heavy tape to mark or mask off the areas I don't want to be sprayed. So there is the worn lipstick layer and I'll clean that off with my scrap paper again. And once I completely clean it off, I'm gonna move on to my seedless preserves. Now, I didn't wanna spray these so they were perfect. I wanted them to be a little splattered looking so they were a softer, more like in the distance type background. So that's why I didn't spray them so many times. I did about three sprays per stenciling. Again, I'm gonna spray the bottom half of that once it's cleaned off with my scratch paper. And I have a little pan of water I bring in my stamp room whenever I'm stenciling and then I can just rinse them off and towel dry them. Otherwise I have to walk all the way to the bathroom which is like the next door to my stamp room. I can't be bothered with such things. Mm -mm. So now we have Salty Ocean. I love that I picked two colors that when blended together make the third color. So the pink and the blue could blend together to make the purple. I just love that. It it means that when they overlap, it, they don't look crazy, like weird colors, like, I don't know, orange and blue might look a little bit weird layered together. So I really love where the balloons overlap. It look, makes them look kind of translucent like they would if they were actually floating. So I do have one half balloon there, but it's gonna be mostly covered up. So I'm not worrying about that too much. And then I'm picking up more color and then I'm, I'm not wor too, um, excited about the background I made by picking up the color, but I will end up using it. I brought in some Nouveau Shimmer Powder. I believe the color's lilac. I'm gonna wet that with a paintbrush on a window sheet. And then I decided I probably need my splatter box so I don't get this everywhere, but I'm just gonna use that scraggly paintbrush, drag it against the edge of the window sheet to get some really fine splatter. And I love the little added element of shimmer that this gives the background. So now we just need to set that aside to dry. Isn't it yummy? So fun. And then I'm gonna stamp out the images I need for my card. So I'm gonna have my fox um, popping out of the cake and then I'm gonna have the mouse popping out of the present. I'm gonna put him on the inside of the card. So for my fox, I'm starting with E11. I didn't want a fox that was too red. It was just gonna clash with the colors of this card. So my darkest color is E15. It has a little bit of an orangey element to it, but I kept it really light with the E13 and the E11. And then I did use a little N1 to add shadowing to his white areas and then my E29 for his nose and gave him some rosy cheeks. For the mouse, I'm using N1 as my lightest color and N3 for my darkest and just coloring him so he has a little highlight on top of his head. He's very cute. Both of these critters are darling. I love their paws hanging over. If you watch my channel, you know I love that look. <laughs> so and now I'm adding some pink to his cheeks and his ears. For all the rest of my images, I wanted to pull in those colors in my background. So I am using some blue, purple, 
and pink. And I really tried to pick Copic markers that I thought would go well with the Distress Oxide sprays. So therefore, I'm only using one blue, which is B24 on all of my blue things. And I just went over some of the areas more than once to make them a little bit darker. So I'd have a little bit of that element of a highlight. And then for my pink, I'm using R43 and RV13. I really thought this color went well with my background. And then for my purple, I am, I, I lost it, it went off the screen and I don't remember. I used just one marker. It's a V marker and it was on the screen. So <laughs> that's the one I'm using. For the cake, I used E25 as my lightest color. I wanted to have the frosting or that like drizzle on top of the cake be colored and then the cake be chocolate because why would you eat cake if it's not chocolate? I'm not sure. I'm not. I love chocolate cake with chocolate ice cream on the side. <laughs> All right, so there's all my images. I'm adding white highlights to everything, especially those shiny things like the icing and the balloons. It really helps bring them to life. Plus, I love a little freckle on my critter's face with my white gel pen. So there it is all done up. And then I'm gonna bring in the coordinating dies to die cut these out. There's a die for all of the images in this stamp set. So I'll die cut those out sticking them in place with my heavy tape and running it through on my mini die cutting machine. This is my buddy. I love it. <laughs> I have this because I'm a part of the design team. It is um, available through Heffy Doodle, but you have to order it from their shop and they're in Scotland. So there's the disclaimer, but I will link it for you below because I love it. It's super cute. The rest of the Happy Doodle products I'm sharing today are available at scrapbook.com. I will have that linked for you below too because I really love Happy Doodle products. They're really fun. So now I am gonna use this crazy paper to die cut out the word happy birthday for my card and I, I still was not sure if it was gonna be okay. It's really crazy background. But when you have a crazy background like that, whether it's distress oxide sprays, ink blending, gel press prints, alcohol prints, sometimes die cutting it is the best way to get a good use of that paper. And I thought it turned out really cool once I had die cut it. I loved the variation of the color. So I'm gonna stick those on to a the solid outline for them that I die cut from some dark purple paper. And then my glue erupted. Have you had your glue erupt before? Yeah, I don't know why it happened, but it did. So I wiped it off on a little scratch piece of paper. Then I picked the glue up with my finger and just pounced it on the back of the die so I wouldn't waste that, you know, micro ounce of glue. And it worked really, really well. <laughs> so I was happy with that, how it stuck down so nicely and I didn't waste the glue. This is, um, the glue that I'm using is Gloobert, which is the glue from Heffy Doodle. And it's just cute because of the name. Gloobert has a little bear on it. So cute. All right, so I'm gonna arrange my images where I think they're gonna go so I can figure out where I wanna put my slider. Now this slider die set has six sliders in it. If number one is the smallest die in that set, I used the third largest, the third smallest that one right there to die cut out my opening for my slider. Next, I am decided I really wanted my sentiment to have more of a pop on my card. So I laid it down on my Versamark pad and I'm pressing it in to cover the entire piece with ink. Then I'm gonna sprinkle on some clear embo embossing powder and make it nice and shiny. I love this look on my cards. And I'll heat set that and it's gonna melt and just intensify the colors, which is a good thing. I think it really helps it pop off of the card. All nice and shiny. Then I decided, well, I might as well do that to the balloons, but here's the thing. Sometimes when you do this and it, you know, intensifies the color, it totally changed the color of the pink balloons. And now they're a little bit orangey. Did I redo them? No, I just used it. I decided to go with it. It's bugging me still though. It's bugging me. I guess there's still time to change it. I could layer it right over the top and have some balloons that are pink and not, I. it's like a coral color. Yeah. Oh well. 
We'll see. Maybe I'll change it before I send it to somebody. So now I am going to create my penny slider. I'm using this thin foam tape from Heffy Doodle. It's the five millimeter wide. Their foam tape is extra thick, which I love. It works great for like light up cards. Um, when you have sh shaker cards that have a little bit thicker elements, it's great foam tape. Plus that foam tape is not sticky on the edges which I love because then I don't have to worry about that on my shaker cards. Okay, so I attached my sentiment to that sticky tape that I stuck to the penny and it's sandwiched between my sentiment and the penny on that card so it can slide up and down. And then I'm just putting my fox on my cake, the little frosting and candle on his head so it looks like he's popping up out of the cake. Super cute. And then you can see that slider going up and down on the card. I'm going to tape this shut because I used a heavyweight cardstock and I wanted it to lay flat so I could attach my background with some foam tape. Um, that way the penny can move up and down a little bit easier with the lift of that front layer. Then I had these envelopes with little notes on them. I wasn't loving how they looked. So I decided to stamp Let's Celebrate there at the bottom. And then on the inside, I'll add my present with the little mouse peeking up from out of that box. So cute. And he's going to get a little party hat. And then for the lid of the present, I'm gonna just have that kind of leaning up against it. I thought, oh, maybe here I'll add the little envelope with a note in it. Mm -mm. It just didn't work out today. So we'll save those for another time, but they're super cute, tiny envelopes. So there is my sliding happy birthday card. I love birthday cards with a little bit of a surprise. And this one with that birthday that slides up and down like the balloons are lifting it away, I just love. Now I'm using a Stardust glitter pen to add a little bit of shine to those white elements on the cake. But if you love this idea of the balloons lifting up the sentiment, you totally have to see my slide up house card that I did something similar, but it was a different sliding mechanism. So I'm gonna link that in the top right corner for you right now, so you can check that out if you like. And then I will see you all again very soon on the next video. If you like this video, let me know with a thumbs up. And if you're new here, feel free to subscribe. I have new videos all the time. And I will see you guys on the next one. Happy stamping, bye.